master key the key that's all that mattered finding it using it the damned key where was it Ryder looked at his own reflection in the lake before he broke it with his hands sending ripples throughout the rest of it what he'd seen was a wary man tired aching black-haired black-eyed and angry impatient finding his treasure had become quite the struggle as of late and it had been many years that he had passed on the road his beard growing long his hair even longer he looked unkempt he looked intimidating and he looked like he wanted to tear someone apart though he did not he simply wanted one thing the master key he whispered to himself shaking the water from his face and beard i must have it the master key was something of import one might muster after listening to this man speak for but a minute Perhaps even the master key was something that could be discovered. Perhaps it could actually existed. But it would appear to the common listener that the man seeking such a key was but a madman. Perhaps even worse than a madman. Perhaps he was a dreamer. This man was such a man. Incessantly unstopping, he searched for the mystical object. He wondered where it might be. He listened to stories of it in dark-lit pubs. He went in search of it after rumors he'd heard from local hearsay. He took the word of fools as gold and truth, and he went every which way in search of it. He had to find it, the master key, but where was it, anyhow? The man mounted to his horse did, to take on bounties, hunted men, and either killed or captured them, returning them alive or dead to their local lawman's jail, where they would stay for their crimes or worse. Although one might think that, that, that the man, his name was un, unimportant, though he went by Ryder, did this as a service, perhaps he did not. He did, he did it for gold, which he accrued to continue his search for that one particular object that could change his luck forever. The damned master key. On one new day, Ryder found himself in a pub, such of those he often frequented late in the dim of the evening, listening for once instead of speaking and asking questions as was his custom. He listened and listened intently, but no one spoke any word of the master key. In fact, all of which they spoke was of farming, of the local harvest, or of women and drinking. Typical topics to discuss in a pub, Ryder surmounted, but he was not satisfied, and his incessant thinking led him into a grave pit of despairing, one in which, after this night, he was not sure that he would be able to climb decisively out of. It was decided, he supposed, it was his fate to forever search for the key, or to lose hope and give up the hunt. But then he heard a man, and the man spoke loudly. Does anyone know of the key? He was a tall man with light hair and dark eyes, and Ryder wondered who he might be. He always wondered of what he might be speaking of. Speaking of. When, whenever anybody spoke of a key. Anyone. Anyway, anyone. The man repeated over the rustle and bustle of the pub. Ryder nodded to himself, and eyeing the man eagerly, he raised his glass up and gestured for him to come near. Come here, he said. Come here to chat. The man with the light hair eyed him warily, as Ryder was a gruff individual, of course, and he was not one to approach lightly. Nonetheless, the man approached, and his achiness and tiredness began to show, and he himself, though not a rough individual, did seem to mirror at least somewhat that of Ryder's appearance. He liked that Ryder did, but he often found ways to like people who he would otherwise despise, something he'd picked up from his father, someone who had been a very kind but unambitious man. He had hated his father, but he had loved him and, and pitied him, too. He felt a similar way towards this man for some reason, and so he was keen to listen to him speak and to understand his words. I wonder, Ryder said as the man seated himself in an open bar stool next to him, turning to face him, his legs extended and nearly touching Ryder's. I wonder, do you enjoy this fine ale? Ryder raised his glass as if to show what he meant, though it was entirely unnecessary enjoy it said the man tipping his cup to spill some of it onto the floor and then taking a drink i drink it Ryder laughed at that you're a clever man he said taking a gulp from his own glass tell me sir what did you mean when you spoke of the key oh said the man as if he were surprised to take it aback perhaps you have some interest in it yes said Ryder in an attempt to mask his intrigue which nod away at him as per usual of course you are said the man enthusiastically who wouldn't be? The key is the most powerful thing in this world. No man could resist it if he just laid his eyes upon it, wherever it is. Ryder was intrigued, and he leaned in to listen more intently. I wonder, he said, do you know anything of such a key? Me, said the man, acting, again acting as if he were surprised that Ryder would ask him such a question. Of course. 
I wonder then, Ryder said Landon, head nearly level with his knees, his hands in his lap and clapped together. Would you tell me of what you know? The man nodded. I surely would, he said. But it is a dangerous thing, a dangerous path, that of what you ask. Ryder nodded. Of course I can handle it, he said. Tell me about it then, would you? I suppose that I will then, he said, nearly purring. I'll tell you where you need to go. Ryder stared at him intently. After a moment, the man was telling him the story, the story of the Master Key, a story that Ryder was all too familiar with and far too eager to hear again, especially from such a man, as he had never heard someone tell it so joyfully and so eagerly. Perhaps Ryder thought this man was the man he had searched for, the man who would lead him, point him in the right direction of that object that he so desperately sought. He ended. Ryder eyed him a moment and then acting as if he were entirely disinterested by the story, though it was obvious that he'd been just moments earlier, asked him calmly, what would you have me do then? You've told me nothing of the key's location, as you even know where it is. I don't even know your name, sir. Would you care to tell me? In truth, Ryder would have done anything to find it. It did not matter to him where he might find it, only that he searched for it, only that the hope of finding it remained inside of him, and this man, he, provi he provided such a hope to Ryder. Yet he asked in such a manner anyway. My name is Ronan, said Ronan, and I can show you where this key is, but he said, interrupting himself, this is a dangerous journey. Ryder smirked and gestured towards himself. Do I not look as if I am ready for such a journey? He laughed boisterously, boisterously. Show me where it is. I will get it. Good, said Ronan, but there is a catch. Oh, questioned Ryder, raising an eyebrow. Go on, then tell me what it is you want. I want you, said Ronan, in a twisted grin on his face, to find the key and then... Ronan paused a moment. Yes, asked Ryder, and then... And then I want you to unlock a chest for me. A chest, asked Ryder, feigning interest. All he thought to go after was the key, as it was the only object that truly interested him. What's in this chest? Ronan shrugged. That is what I'd like to know. He took a sip of his beer. As you know, the key is said to unlock any lock. Of course, said Ryder. Then why the interest in this chest? Ronan shrugged once more. It has some value to me.